Also in health news, lots of folks depend on a cup of or two of coffee to get them going in the mornings. How it works has been studied in lots of research trials through the years. The most recent investigation offers some surprising results. Our medical expert, Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White Health joins us to explain all of this. Dr. Winter, what does that new research tell us about how coffee works on our bodies? To charge a very interesting study using MRI scans to track activity in the brain. Now they took volunteers, put them in two groups. One group they gave them caffeinated coffee to drink. The other was hot water with caffeine only in it. And then they measured MRI scans. And what they found, there's an area in the brain I want to show you here, right up here in the middle of the brain, that actually relaxes you, slows you down, makes you sleepy. Well, this turned that off. Either one of these, the caffeine or the caffeinated coffee did that. But another area of the brain, right down below this, this was only stimulated by the caffeinated coffee. What, the, what they noticed when this activity went up, people were more attentive, they were more focused, even they appeared to have more short-term memory. So caffeine and coffee seems to do more than just caffeine alone, Tashara. Okay, so speaking of that, what about those caffeinated soft drinks, energy drinks, all of those? How do those now compare to coffee? Well, they seem to work for a lot of people. I have a lot of patients and friends don't drink coffee, and that seems to work. I think whatever floats your boat is fine. I point out, though, that caffeine, whether it's in coffee or separate, in these sports drinks or energy drinks, that can cause some side effects. It can make you anxious. It can make you not sleep well. It can make you sweat. It can give you a little tremor. So I've helped a lot of people by saying cut back on caffeine. All those symptoms can get better. So caffeine has some good and some bad properties. Mm. A new tool switching gears, gears here to help RSV has recently been approved by the CDC for both Pfizer and GSK companies. What are your thoughts about the new vaccine? Yeah, I think it's a good idea. We saw a lot of RSV last year. Now, typically we saw RSV in young children, but we saw a lot more in the older people, the frail people last year. So I think it's a good idea for those two groups of people. Vaccines not out now come out in the fall, and at that point we'll have more information, but I think it's a good idea we can help further with the vaccines that seems to be right on track. And I thought this was scary to even hear about malaria cases now being reported in America. I thought this only occurred in certain parts of Africa. What's going on here? Well, it does occur in Africa, but also in tropical and subtropical areas of Asia, also Latin America. And yeah, there were five cases of malaria, one in Texas, four in Florida that they were that were seen just recently. Now, malaria was common in the United States back in the 1950s, southern states primarily, and most of it went away back then because of a huge effort to get rid of mosquitoes. Since then, we haven't seen it until just now, but five cases, I think you're more likely to get West Nile virus like you talked about earlier. So be careful with mosquitoes early morning, late evening, that's when they're active. As you said, use bug sprays. Try to stay indoors when you can because malaria, maybe West Nile virus, maybe dinghy, maybe chicken guya. All those are spread by oh mosquitoes. <laughs> you just bring it in and add more to the party, Dr. Winter. Thank you so much. Appreciate <laughs> you as always for chatting with us. Thank you. Bye bye.